Peace, peace. <clears throat> What's going on with your family? Yeah. Alrighty. So, got some people fell in first. Peace, peace, as long. Peace, peace. Just letting people fill up the chat. What's going on with y'all? Peace, peace. Peace, family. Money Boy Films. Go get it. So, <clears throat> continuing the bill from earlier in regards. Peace, peace. Peace, family. Islam, Sister Ivy. Um, this is my dad going thing at. Excuse me, y'all. I'm trying to find my Google Drive. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, actually, this is something. Yeah, so we're just continuing to build off of that in regards to international law and understanding what uh, international law is dealing with. First off, first thing I'm gonna do is pull out my self-made Black's Law. Hold on. And <clears throat> you're gonna go right into, let me see if this one has it. Nope. Islam Merz, Islam. That's part one. I'm gonna have to go into my part two. You're gonna go look at international law. Shalom, peace. <laughs> yeah, winning. You know, and uh, I took advantage when I used to work at the aquarium. Uh, what I would do is because, you know, I had to literally make three parts, three big binders. You know, so what I did was every day I came into work, I would um, print out, you know, maybe 100 pages. So they had a big printer. So if I try to do it all in one day, it would look too obvious. So I spread it out throughout time. You know, while I was working there, every day I come in, print out 100 pages on my break time, go pick it up, punch three holes through it, add it to the binder. You know, and I would kept just just kept doing that over time until I was done. Um, let me see. I N T E R. Getting close, getting warm. Looking for international. <clears throat> M -M. Okay, we back. <clears throat> All right, y'all. So just so y'all know, we ain't playing games. We looking right here at what was it? Y'all can see this. All right, international law. I'm gonna let y'all have a look at it first. Then I'm gonna read it.
International law, the law which regulates the intercourse of nations. The law of nations. Kent Com 1-4, the customary law which determines the rights and regulates the intercourse of independent states in peace and war. Okay? Customary. Customary. Don't pull out. All right. Let's look up the term customary. Customary. Customary is an adjective. Islam, Islam. Customary is an adjective. Okay. Commonly practiced or used as a matter of course, usual, based on custom or tradition rather than written law or contract. <laughs> We're going to read that one more time. Customary. Commonly practiced or used as a matter of course, usual, based on custom or tradition, rather than written law or contract. So now we're going to look up tradition. P S T T. This is all getting understanding of what international law is. T R A D. Here we go. Tradition. Now. The passing down of elements of a culture from generation to generation, especially by oral communication, a mode of thought or behavior followed by a people continuously from generation to generation, custom or usage. A set of such customs and usages viewed as a coherent body of precedence influencing the present, meaning right now, meaning those customs and traditions that were passed down from way before 1492 are present today. They still passed down, right? Through, let me catch my spot. They're passed down through many ways, oral communication. They can be passed down, uh, via a mode of thought or behavior, meaning you're acting, you're behaving, your, your actions match that of yours, of your ancestors. And this is a behavior that's followed by a people continuously. So kind of like how they say, yo, so you can see more today, how they dress in their natural habit. And then you look in history and you see Moors that were in the same natural habit. It, the only difference was that every custom matched the time period that our ancestor was in at that particular cycle. So, but back then I look in old paintings and museums, history books with illustrations, carvings on walls. I see certain elements that we're using today that were used way back then that are still that are being used continuously, even in the present tradition. Um, a set of such customs and usages viewed as a coherent body of precedence influencing the present, a body of unwritten religious precepts. I'm going to repeat that one more time. A body of unwritten religious precepts. So we all have the comprehension that we all have inalienable rights. 
granted to us by our creator, right? So that's what they're talking about, a body of unwritten religious precepts. You being here in the physical presence, that didn't need to be written down. That's self-explanatory. That's present. If I stand before you and I wasn't documented nowhere and I'm like, I couldn't speak. So I can't speak. I'm mute. I'm not documented nowhere. Fingerprints nowhere. It's like, yo, where is this guy from? And I'm just mute. Even though you couldn't identify me, you couldn't deny the fact that I exist, that I'm present before you. Correct? Boom. That's what tradition is. A body of unwritten religious precepts. A time-honored practice or a set of such practices. Five. This is in regards to law. The transfer of property to another. Tradition. Tradition. The transfer of property to another. Tradition. The etymology from the Latin Traditio, T-R-A-D-I-T-I-O, or tradir, tradere, T-R-A-D-E-R-E, -E, which means to hand down or to pass down to the next generation, generation to generation, tradition. Now, we're going to go back to international law. International law, the law which regulates the intercourse of nations, the law of nations, the customary Law, which determines the rights and regulates the intercourse of independent states in peace and war. So when we talk about coming back into the common law, the common law is based on your customary culture, traditions. How did your ancestors function? You have a right to function the same. All right, y'all. Now. Well, read um, some things in reference to international law, right? We're going to keep going in because international law is based on persons. So um, let me pull this up. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> International um. Here we go. I'm going to do the convention. International law. <clears throat> Thank y'all for bearing with me. Just pulling some stuff up. Let me see here. That should be in the folder now. Boom. Now, so right now, y'all can pull this up if y'all want. Okay. That's what I pulled up, PDF. Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, 1969. Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, 1969. All right. So this is where I'm reading from. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with, and this was done at Vienna on the 23rd of May, 1969. So part one, 
Introduction. Article 1. Scope of the present convention. The present convention applies to treaties between states. For the purpose of the present convention, this is Article 2. A. Treaty means an international agreement concluded between states in written form and governed by international law, whether embodied in a single instrument or in two or more related instruments and whatever its particular designation. B. Ratification, acceptance, approval, and accession mean in each case the international act so named whereby a state establishes on the international plane its consent to be bound by a treaty. Full powers means a document emanating from the competent authority of a state designating a person or persons to present the, to represent the state for negotiating, adopting or authenticating the text of a treaty for expressing the consent of the state to be bound by a treaty or for accomplishing any other act with respect to a treaty. D, reservation, means a unilateral statement, however phrase or name, made by a state when signing, ratifying, accepting, approving, or acceding to a treaty, whereby it purports to exclude or to modify the legal effect of certain provisions of the treaty in their application to the state. E, negotiating state, means a state which took part in the drawing up and adoption of the text of the treaty. Negotiating state means a state which took part in the drawing up and adoption of the text of the treaty. Contracting state, F, means a state which has consented to be bound by the treaty, whether or not the treaty has entered into force. Contracting state means a state which has consented to be bound by the treaty. So that would be the United States of America. That would be the contracting state. The negotiating state is the Moorish Empire within our treaty, right? Here we go. G, party means a state which has consented to be bound by the treaty and for which the treaty is in force. H, third state means a state not a party to the treaty. Okay. I. International organization means an intergovernmental organization. The provisions of paragraph one regarding the use of terms in the present convention are without prejudice to the use of those terms or to the meanings which may be given to them in the internal law of any state. Three. International agreements not within the scope of the present convention. The fact that the present convention does not apply to international agreements concluded between states and other subjects of international law or between such other subjects of international law or to international agreements not in written form shall not affect. The legal force of such agreement shall not affect the application to them of any of the rules set forth in the present convention to which they would be subject under international law independently of the convention. Shall not affect the application of the convention to the relations of states as between themselves under international agreements to which other subjects of international law are also parties. Let me see here. Check it. Go to Article 5. Treaties, con treaties constituting international organizations and treaties adopted within an international organization. The present convention applies to any treaty which is the constituent instrument of a international organization and to any treaty adopted within an international organization without prejudice to any relevant rules of the organization. Okay, so when you have an organization and you apply the treaty to your organization, it's saying you fall underneath international law, whether you want to or not. Let's go.
Uh oh, battery life. Battery life. Battery life. Where my thing at? Where the charger at? Swing it over here. Allow my joint to get some juice. Juice You so juice As y'all can tell, I do a lot of reading. And I'm a clown at the same time. I'm a clown. I'm a clown. I'm a clown. I'm a smart clown, though. Hey y'all, uh, is it is the video straight or is it upside down? Just let me know. Just let me know if it's straight or if it's upside down. <laughs> it's hot today, man. I'm in rise out, yo. Look at that. You gotta remember when the colonizers came upon this land, they found us naked. Okay, they found us naked in the Garden of Eden. You better stop that. Clothes, shoot. Honestly, man, if I'm in my natural habit, I'm in. I'm like this all day. So here we go. The adoption. Uh, this is Article Nine. Adoption of the text, right? The adoption of the text of a treaty takes place by the consent of all the states participating in it is in its drawing up. Except that's provided in paragraph two. So. Should I go right through the bike? Yeah. Okay. The adoption of the text of a treaty at an international conference takes place by the vote of two thirds of the states present in voting, unless by the same majority they shall decide to apply to a different rule. The text of a treaty, this is Article 10, right? Authentication of the text. The text of a treaty is established as authentic and definitive by such procedure as may be provided for in the text or agreed upon by the states participating in its drawing up or failing such procedure by the signature, signature at referendum or initiating by representatives of those states of the text of the treaty or of the final act of a conference incorporating the text. This is telling you all the things that happened when they drew up the, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Demi, stop doing that. You stop doing that, Demi. Kente. Do not tap the rock on that glass, okay? You might crack it, okay? If you crack it, we're gonna get cold that night. You hear me? Okay. Shoot, cause when the sun go down, it do get a little chilly, okay? It do. So, I'ma switch. You're gonna get into Persons in regards to international law. Persons in regards Here we go. Let's see what I'm pulled up here. <clears throat> Personality and international law. That's a book. Nope, not what I'm looking for.
Okay. I'm going to show you how simple this is, man. I went to Wiki. Okay. Put the camera out. I went to Wiki. Okay. Wiki. Look at this. Basics. History. Okay. Not saying this is the end all be all, but I'm like, yo, get your mind wrapped around it. Get down to the basics. Use what's accessible to you right there in your face every day. All right. So international legal personality is an important facet of international law that has developed throughout history as a means of international representation. With the acquirement of personality comes privileges and responsibilities. Personality has been given to states, corporations, non-governmental organizations, international organizations, and individuals. Now, Rules made by states for states is the basis of international law. International law governs states and their relationships with one another. Historically, it was believed that states were the only actors in international law and therefore other entities and therefore other entities were merely the responsibility of international law. They're all entities, yo. Basics. Gaining international legal personality is often a goal of international actors. By gaining personality, they gain acknowledgement in the international legal community. The amount of personality that an international actor has depends entirely upon state recognition. Legal personality can determine the rights that actors have as well as their standings with courts. A personality is given by states. It stands to reason that international actors are only effective when states allow them to be. Without the approval of states, other actors have no rights nor any true ability in the international arena. So this is why we have to come together as a state and, 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 and block out all foreigners, all foreign interference. One question that critics of the effectiveness of legal personality ask is if personality contains any inherent legal capacity to act. Personality is a concept with many blurred areas, but must be grasped to understand the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of international actors. Personality is a concept. It's not physical. A person. They say when in international law, a person. OK, a personality is a concept. It's a thought. It's an idea. The same thing with trust. Trust is a concept, is a thought. It's an idea. Trust can be manipulated into many different forms. You can use a trust to make a family trust. You can use a trust to make a business. You can use a trust to make a government. You can use a trust to secure. You know what I'm saying? Is what form do you use that in? But it's the same thing. Concept, thought, state, state of mind, concept, thought. It's not something physical, it's abstract. Okay? So, um, subjects, internet, uh, entities, entities, entities that are capable of being granted personality and thus being subjects of international law are those with the capacity to act within the international arena. Entities that are candidates for international legal personality include corporations, companies, sovereign states, international organizations, and individuals. These entities should have legal powers, the ability to effectively exercise their powers and associations with states on a permanent basis. So you see what you're doing when you're creating a trust and you're attaching your treaty to it, you're stepping into the affairs of men. You're stepping into the international arena. This is why now when you have issues and you're, you have any property that's damaged that belongs to your trust, that's an international issue. That's not a domestic issue. So it can be taken to international court. But y'all got to start writing they're like, what's the process? The process is if something happened 
Man, who do I need to notify? It's like, what do you want to do? You want to seek suit for damages for your private property? You have a right. If you if if they take private property, you have a right to be compensated. If it was taken without your consent, you have a right. So all these things are the Constitution you can exercise now. Now they make sense because now you're lined up. International level. That's what it's about. Persons, personality. They're not talking about, oh, you know, I like cool. You know, he's an outstanding guy. His personality is real cool. But you got to understand, my personality is still a concept. It's a thought in your mind. Because my personality can change. It's not definite. It's not, mm, right? People change over time. So personality is a thought that can change just like that. So that's what a personality is in international law. What is your thought? How are you functioning? How are you thinking? So a man thinketh, so is he. You get it? We're talking about the international platform. So now if you're thinking that you have a state ID that's created by the state or a license that's created by the state and you identify with that, now that's your concept. That's the concept in your mind. It's just a thought in your mind because guess what? There's an expiration date on that thing. So if it expires and you're still breathing, it's a lie. That's called fraud. You understand? So understanding personality. So everyone's been dealing with a personality or a person or a straw. The problem is the straw they made for you is not connected to a treaty. So therefore, everything they do to you, acting as surety for the straw in international law, you don't have no grounds because your subject property, your chattel property, you don't have no rights to ownership. So you can't step into the international realm. You don't have no rights of protections. This is why it's important to create your own straw, your own personality. That's the whole point of self-determination. Self-determination. I determine to you the personality I'm going to use to conduct business or to act accordingly on the international playing field. All right, so let me slow down. Let me slow down. If you have a business, right, and you, uh, the principal place of business, you incorporated it into the United States. That business is domestic, right? So let's say you register your car, company car to that business. You're still held liable, right, as surety because that business is underneath the jurisdiction of the United States. So the agents and agencies still have supreme authority over that. They can overrule you because you're still chattel property. OK, it's not foreign. It's domestic. It's not attached to a treaty. So because it's not foreign, that means that you are a part of that society. So therefore, you have agreed to be to to um, face the consequences or be subject to the rules of that society. OK, so that's what that's about. So. But if you register your car to a foreign personality that's outside the jurisdiction of the U.S., that is not a resident. OK, has its own identifying number. It's a personality. It's a thought. It's not a physical being. Right. Remember I was saying earlier, Sunel don't have a face. Sunel don't have a uh, face. Uh, a physical body. Sunel is not thinking in itself. Sunel is a concept. It's a concept. Being Marsh American is a concept that has been handed down orally from generation to generation in different things. We did building, structure, civilization, paintings, architecture, carvings and walls, whatever we did. The purpose was for it to be passed. It was for the elements, the principle of, you know, the substance of what those civilizations had to be passed down from generation to generation. 
You see what I'm saying? From generation to generation, passed down. Tradition, customary. That's what you call customary law, which is constitutional. That's why Article 6, treaties, treaties dealing with customary law. Okay? Now, here we go. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Let's see here. I'm gonna go. Now, this is where I'm at. Okay. Personality, privileges, and rights. Rights that come with obtaining international legal personality include the right to enter into treaties, the right to immunity, the right to send and receive legations, and the right to bring international claims to obtain reparation for damages. Those who have international legal personality can sue and be sued can enter into contracts, can incur debt, and pay various taxes. NGOs, let me make sure what an NGO is. An NGO is a non-governmental organization. NGOs with personality are able to participate directly with international bodies and organizations created by legislation and treaties. So treaties, right? allow non-governmental agencies to participate directly with international bodies and organizations created by legislation and treaties. They are given the ability to fund the cause rather than ask for funding for a cause. They are even given certain legal rights and protections. NGOs that are parties of a treaty can file for wrongdoings. NGOs with personality can eventually gain representative status on international councils and assemblies. Some NGOs, such as Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, have been given rights that governments usually give to IOs, international organizations. NGOs are not held back by things such as political parties and re-elections. They are simply allowed to lobby for what they think is the best choice. This freedom is, typ this freedom is typically found only in non-governmental organizations. This freedom gives NGOs a type of flexibility and efficiency that, once again, other international actors don't possess. More energy is bound to arise from an NGO rather than an IGO, as NGOs are voluntary, non-governmental organizations. The people, the people, the people within a non-governmental organization, so you see how people come together and then they put on a personality. And those personalities are normally known as societies in international law or states or nations or corporations or whatever you want to call it. You understand? It's about the concept. The people within an NGO are dedicated to their cause and are more likely to work harder to get things done. NGOs are also able to act beyond the realm of sovereignty in a way that governments and their organizations cannot do. Once an NGO reaches consultative status, they are able to do even more. Consultative NGOs are able to receive official documents, attend meetings of various councils, be consulted by a secretary general or committee, and participate in hearings in various ways. You go right here. Obtaining international legal personality. There are theories to consider when deciding how international legal personality should be applied and from where the power comes. The legal traditionalist approach. The legal traditionalist approach is one such method in this way of thinking. Thinking. It's about thinking, y'all. It's about thinking. The prophet, uh, Prophet Drali said, if I can only get you more thinking, you understand? He's trying to. He was getting. He was getting us ready for international law. He was getting us ready for international law, thinking, because every a personality is a thought. It's a concept. If I can only get you thinking about concepts, 
Step into the international realm. Be yourselves, Moors. Be yourselves. Stay true to your customary laws that have been passed down from generation to generation. You are who your ancestors were without doubt a contradiction. All right. In this way of thinking, one would believe that international legal personality must be explicitly transmitted from states to actors via legal via some legal instrument like a treaty or a constitution or trust indenture. You know what I'm saying? Articles of organization, different terms for different things. I mean, different terms for the same thing. Without this transfer, an actor has no standing. Without the transfer, an actor has no standing. In this approach, states are viewed as the ultimate international actors and the only source of personality. You see why it's so important to form your state? I mean, we're already a state within the Moorish Empire, but then we got to get more compressed. We got to get more tight. You understand? We can't just be loose all over the place, Moorish Empire. We're loose. No, we're the Moorish Empire, and then now we're tightened up in certain places. You got Sunel over here. You know what I'm saying? You got um, Ta, you got Ta, you got Ta Al Maruk over in Tennessee. You got another organization over there. Another one over there. Another one over there, another one over there, all operating and functioning and thinking in the name of the empire. That's how that's supposed to be. We got to get tight. We got to get tighter, tight, tight. You can't hurt someone when your hand is loose like this, right? You got to make it tight before you can boom. You see what I'm saying? You want to knock them out. Boom. You ain't trying to slap them so they can get up and, <gasps> and have time. No, you're trying to put them to sleep. Don't give them a chance. If you got a chance to knock them out, boom, knock them out. Don't play around and give them a chance to get up, get their bearings. And then they and then they, you know, they work a miracle on your ass. Don't oh, don't underestimate your opponent. If you have the ability to knock their ass out the ring, knock their ass out the ring. Don't play around. Get right to it. Get right to it. Don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant. If you can, if you can finish it quick, finish it quick. That was even one of Bruce Lee's teachings, right? How to defeat an opponent in less than a minute. He wasn't in there trying to, oh, you know, do the best moves, you know, make the fight last long. Nah, man. He's trying to knock your ass out in less than 60 seconds. Point blank, period. That got to be the mindset. Stop playing around. So states, y'all, we got a, we got our, we got, we got our nation, right? Then the prophet said, save yourselves. You know what that means? When it says save yourselves, that means, all right, y'all, the nation is here, it's formed. Now, wherever y'all at in y'all particular state territory, start coming together, start studying together, start building together, formulate your body over there. You understand? Bring it together. Create your personality. How you gonna function? Think, think. Attach that, attach the treaty to your personality. Think, think. No one's thinking. Check it. Now, this is the factual, realist approach. Yeah, build with who's and around you and ready, exactly. So here's the factual realist approach. That was the legal traditionalist approach, right? The factual realist approach. Directly opposite of this approach is the factual realist approach. This method of thinking outlines global integration as the source of international legal personality rather than states. Factual realists would assume that states will eventually cease to be the source of personality for NGOs as globalization and transculturation occur. Look at what transculturation is. It's pretty much merging and converging cultures. That sounds like assimilation to me. Um, yeah, I don't know about that dynamic uh, 
factual realist approach that sounds like uh colonization that's how we got into this situation in the first place with their factual realist approach right here's a dy dynamic state approach the dynamic state approach falls rather nicely between the two latter approaches basically a halfway point between factual realism and legal traditionalism this approach finds the source of personality for actors lies within international treaties or customs <laughs> Marie, that one more time. Yeah. The dynamic state approach, and mind you, these are all concepts of thought. The dynamic state approach falls rather nicely between the two latter approaches, basically a halfway point between factual realism and legal traditionalism. This approach finds the source of personality for actors lies within international treaties or customs. Remember, we went over customs earlier passed down from generation to generation via oral or through elements or through ways of living that affect the mode and behavior of thinking, even now to the present. Okay, right? So this approach finds the source of personality for actors lies within international treaties or customs. Dynamic state approach theorists would claim that while legal traditionalists lean too much towards preserving international law through tradition, factual realists tend to disregard the customs and traditions of international law. So this is why factual, right? Like I said, sounded like colonialism, because they don't have no respect for customs and traditions. You understand? No respect for customs and traditions. Yeah, look at me. I'm um, thing. I got joined on the phone. I got my I, I I got my books here. Like, yo, utilize it, man. Our ancestors didn't have all these things accessible to us like this. Uh. Hmm. See here. Find some more stuff. Okay. So this is where I'm at now. Let me show y'all. So I went down to the bottom, right? I went down to the reference. References, right? And then hit the first one, international legal personality. All right. And it'll pull you here. So uh, this thing right here, Isonic. All right, that's where I'm reading from. Cool. We're gonna we're gonna be watching um Spider Man in Carlos's room. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Just in case he doesn't have no bad words in it, they just should be saying. Okay, you're fine. If it does, I could take. I think I could make it where they remove. I think. You're fine. Okay. 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 International legal personality, right? International law is based on rules made by states for states. Rules made by states for states. We had to make a treaty for the United States of America to keep their ass in check, right? All right, won't you consider the Morsh Empire state? Okay, the state, the, the Morsh Empire had to agree to the uh, American constitution, so therefore it had to be in alignment with Morsh law, customary, 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 had to be in alignment with customary Moorish law because the Moorish Empire, right, the Sultan of the Moorish Empire, and the agents of the United States of America both had to agree to it. So why the hell would the Sultan agree if it wasn't in alignment with Moorish customary law, traditional law? Anyway, states are sovereign and equal in their relations and can thus voluntarily create or accept 
to abide by legally binding contracts. Repeat that one more time. States are sovereign and equal in their relations and can thus voluntarily create or accept to abide by legally binding rules, usually in the form of a treaty or convention. By signing and ratifying treaties, states willingly enter into legal contractual relationships with other state parties to a particular treaty, which observance is normally controlled by the reciprocal effects of non-compliance. The capacity of states to enter into such relationships with other states and to create legally binding rules for themselves is a result, is a result of states' international legal personality a prerogative attributed to all sovereign states. I'll read that part one more time. The capacity of states to enter into such relationships with other states and to create legally binding rules for themselves is a result of states' international legal personality, a prerogative attributed to all sovereign states. So you see in the Constitution, none of the corporate states, Washington, New York, Philadelphia, uh, 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 Connecticut, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, etc., etc. All of these corporate states cannot make treaty. They aren't allowed to treaty. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that like Washington State cannot make an agreement with like Georgia, or like Florida can't make an agreement with um, New York, or like LA cannot make an agreement. Uh, uh, um, with Virginia, they're not allowed to make treaties with each other. Okay? But, Sunel is. Sunel can't make contract voluntarily with Washington State. Sunel can make contract voluntarily with New York State. Sunel can make a contract voluntarily with Florida. Sunel can make a contract voluntarily with Utah. Uh, 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 L.A., California, Michigan, Minnesota, blah, 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 okay? So we have a right to make treaty unlimitedly. So if I have an agreement or if Sunil has an agreement with Washington here and then Sunil makes another agreement with Florida over there or with New York, right? Then those, that's, three different states that's three different straight that's three different states that you're able to contract with internationally right because you're allowed to do that but they can't they can't make treaty with each other one state got to stick with one state we can go and treaty with that treaty with you over here treaty with you over there treaty with you over here contract with you over here contract with you over there we can do that we can even go to other countries make contracts you over there because, yes, we do plan to take Sunel to other countries as well. There's most all across the planet, but we got to take care of home first. But the end goal, and this might not be in my lifetime that I get completed. That'll probably be in my children's children, great-great-grandchildren. But to, to, to expand Sunel to the East as well. And I'm not making a separation between the Moorish Empire and Sunel. No, Sunel does... Everything in the name of the Moorish Empire. Do not get it twisted, y'all. Do not get it twisted. Yeah, I see my Sunel flag in the office, but best believe that red flag with that five pointed green stars in the front of the house. You dig? All right. So it's all about personality. We all have a right to create our personality, self determination. Self determination. So this is how operating with your person works. So now you get to create personality. Now you get to contract, right? Different personalities via treaty. You get to step into the international realm, right? If I contract with, if Sunil contract with New York, Washington and Florida, those are all international contracts. Those are all different states. Those are all different states that can't contract with each other themselves. But Sunel can contract with you, 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 and you. And keep on contracting. Willingly. Right? So. So. 
This is why in such a personality, you have the capacity to enter into relationships with other states and to create legally binding rules for themselves. So guess what? You get to create legally binding rules for yourselves. You get to write rules. You get to write laws for yourself. Self-determination, self-autonomy, self-governance. You write your own laws. You live by your own laws as long as they are in harmony with your customary law, your tradition and your culture or your ancestors that have been passed down from generation to generation. Even if it missed the last generation and the generation before that, it skipped two generations, but it got that it, it got back on track with the third one. And the third generation is us. All right. Because slavery didn't go back further than uh, uh, great great grandma. That's about as far back as it went. All right. Well, no, damn, we was enslaved for 500 years. That is bogus. In the beginning of the 18th century, sovereign states alone were considered to have international legal personality. And therefore, the only entities, the only entities with capacity to have rights and obligations under international law. As such, states were, see, so they let you know, the state is an entity. It's a person. You get it? The state is a person. The state is a person. You see Washington State is a person. <laughs> it has a personality. That's why I, I, I hope y'all realize now why I say certain things I say. I say every state has its own personality. When other more be asking me, like, you know, I'm having issues filing uh, or, you know, I'm getting certain things going on in this particular state. Well, every state has its own personality. And guess what? Every state has the right to draw up rules or laws for themselves. So Washington State has the right to draw up rules for Washington State. The difference with me is. And all members of Suno University, we are non resident aliens. We're not residents of Washington State, even though we're sharing space on the same soil, two different jurisdictions. Right, because Washington State is a person. None of my members have Washington State IDs or driver's license. Well, unless they're doing it for commerce, which I always say, you know, if you're driving, then yes, you should have a license. Yeah, simple. But if not, operate privately in your own proper status. But people think that, oh, you know, you're supposed to operate like you. No, it's supposed to be layers, 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 layers. You're not supposed to be you out right in the front. That's stupid. Why would you put yourself out in harm's way? Wouldn't you want to set up little decoys to see like, all right, let me set up one right here, right here. See what happens at that point. Boop. Okay, boom. Mental note taking. Don't do that. Do this. Do this. All right. So Sunel is in contract with Washington, right? Person to person. Sunel is attached to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786. So, due to the fact that Sunel is a person that consists of people that share customary tradition and culture that has been passed down from their, from their ancestors that came from various different parts of the Americas, okay? And here we are today in the present, still here, still rocking. So what our ancestors were, because they were aliens to the United States. Well, back then there was no United States, right? So, but if there were, our ancestors would be what we are today, which is aliens. So that's that. So this is how more is supposed to function in international law, through your personality. This is why everyone has the, the right to self-determination, the right to, um, to create or determine what your relationship is going to be not only with the state but with the community which the community is the state they're one and the same so understand thinking it's all about concept 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 it's in your mind how do you think about this 
How do you think about this? Because this is chess. This is not checkers. You can't just be, boop, I eat you, boop, I eat you, boop, I eat you, king me. Oh, I'm going to eat you. Nah. In chess, you got to slow down. You got to analyze everything. You got to see two, three, four moves ahead. If I do this, it'll do this. It'll set them up for that. Boom. And then you got to set up um, uh, 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 extra plans in case those initial plans don't work out while you're playing chess. So it's the same concept. You got to think that you got to slow down. This is strategy, yo. This is strategy. So now, personality. Soon now has a person. I'm just using what I've been able to do for myself and my tribal members as an example. Sunel's a personality. Sunel's in contract with the state. All of us are members of Sunel because Sunel is a concept of our collective mind, right? Sunel is a concept of our collective mind. Therefore, Sunel is our personalities all put together. The same way how you see Power Rangers when they call upon their Zords and shit and they, you know, Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Tyrannosaurus, you know, and they bring it all together to form what? The master, the the, the Megazord that got the big ass sword, right? They, 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 their Zords always has swords, right? Which is words. Get it? First was the word. So they always had a sword when they formed together. Same thing with Voltron, all right? Or even a, a Big Bad Beetleborgs. I think they had something like that too. I'm going way, 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 way back right now, but. It's the concept of personality. Because now, me, in my flesh and blood, propia persona, su juris, su heritus, solo propio, I'm a non-resident alien. I'm not a resident of Washington State. I'm a non-resident alien. I am foreign to that. But understanding that Washington State is a state of mind. It's a concept. We just read all this about international law, y'all. Don't tell me y'all missing this now. Y'all got to see this concept. It's all in your mind. That's the big secret, yo. It's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. So, where's your treaty at? Are you tied to your treaty? Have you established your organization and placed it back within the Moorish Empire? Which would be... Uh, Form 8832, IRS Form 8832, classification, um, not classification, that would be, uh, yeah, form classification. So you best believe that Sunel is um, in the system, right, of the IRS underneath the branch of the Moorish Empire, point blank period. And I put it right like that, Moorish Empire, mail it off, authorize. You understand? So it's all about thought. I thought about it. I did it. So now I'm going to move forward because it has been done already because it's all in my mind. So with the concept that Washington State is a state of mind, Sunel is a state of mind. The Moorish Empire, right, which Sunel is underneath, is a state of mind. And anyone else, any other Moors that create your organizations, you have to understand, you are creating it in the name of your Moorish empire. And then within that empire, you got different, because I look because I look at Morocco as, if, we go, if we're gonna think about it in modern times, right? I, I look at Morocco or the Moorish empire as the country. And then I look at, everyone's uh small collective um bodies that they got established as states you understand or I, or you know i could call we could call them cities or provinces or whatever tribes clans but that's how i that's how i envision that that's how it looks in my mind so morocco is the country and then you got um and then you got states right so sunel is a state. Morocco's the country. You understand? Or or Sunel will be the province. Or Sunel will be the tribe. Or or Sunel will be uh one of the boroughs. You understand? Because you see how like in Washington there's Kent, there's Seattle, there's Payala, there's Spokane, there's Issaquah. You see what I'm saying? But they're all in Washington. But they all have their own different rules, 
You know what I'm saying? How they act. They got their shit set up, their businesses, how they function. You see what I'm saying? So you got to comprehend that. So we have the Moorish Empire or Morocco. And then now, because what happens is Morocco has always been here. The empire has always been here, but they're, but we've been sleeping. So therefore, there were no active states operating on behalf of the Moorish Empire. The Moorish Empire ain't going to be like... Please do business, do business in my name. The Moorish Empire ain't asking nobody. The Moorish Empire is a thought. It's a concept. It's a way of thinking that's customary. It's been passed down for a very long line of ancestors. It's been passed down. Okay. And if we line up with that, right, and we operate as ourselves and create a personality that's attached to the personality that was already created by our ancestors. Now we got to get active because it's there, but now we got to start spinning the wheel. Somebody got to start putting some nails in, building some stairs, planting some, you know what I mean? To get this Zord called. So think about, uh, think of the Marsh Empire as the Zord, right? We're all, I'm, I'm going to call us uh, Mo Ra. Rangers, all right. So we are Mora Rangers, or I just call them more Rangers, right? We're more Rangers. Forget Power Rangers. We more Rangers, right? We each, you know, what I'm saying, got our little thing. We turn up. It's time to turn up. We transform, whatever. So now Morocco is what when we're all together and we're all functioning under our own capacity of autonomy and we're treating with each other. You know what I'm saying? Then that's what Morocco or the Moorish Empire look like. The Moorish Empire is all of us together. All of our um, uh, jural societies, all of our businesses, everything. That's all of us put together. That's the Moorish Empire. What consists of the empire is the different states, the different pockets of Moors that are working in their collective areas, are working in their particular areas collectively to get things going in the name of the empire as a whole right because the whole continent is whole in our mind right they've divided and conquered shit in our mind so we got to put it whole back in our mind so in my mind right this is the maghrib al-aqsa this isn't uh which is morocco the extreme west maghrib al-aqsa this is the maghrib this isn't washington california new york nevada michigan I don't know, Ohio. I don't know what you're talking about. This is the Maghrib. To me, it's still whole. So anywhere I roll, oh, I'm taking a trip to Ohio, or I'm taking a trip to New York. No, I'm taking a trip to Morocco, and then I'm taking another trip to another part of Morocco, and then I'm going to take another trip to another part of Morocco, and then I'm going to take a trip to another part of Morocco. You're never left Morocco. Never, never, never. Okay? Unless you leave it in your mind, then you're someone else's fool. This is where jurisdiction comes into play. All right? Because no one can speak on your customary laws and traditions of your ancestors. No one. No one. Okay? Freedom of speech. Understand. So, understanding everything is about concept and thought. All right, state to state to state. My thought in my brain is with the Moorish Empire. That's my thoughts. So I was like, hmm, all right. So now for me to be able to put my power and my other child members to put our power so where it can be nice and compressed to where we can actually do some things, not just be laid, you know, spread out. We're woke here, we're conscious here, we're studying, but we're not really making any progressive moves. I'm talking about making progressive moves. I'm not talking about just to hang around and chill out and everybody fessed out and shit just so we could talk about how ill we look. No, I'm talking about actually having something, establishing something for ourselves, for our children. And that can be a beacon light or an example for other Moors establishing their state. And you know what's the ill part about these so-called corporate states? That doesn't mean they can just treat you with one, uh, 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 let's say, state within Morocco, there could be two more states within, two more states contracting with, with, with Washington State right now. 
You understand what I'm saying? There could be more than three, four, five, six states that are contracted in the same place. So you see how before they were called states, if you didn't do the divide and conquer stuff, you would see that a lot of different tribes lived together in that same so-called what we call state today. They lived in that same area together. So like you could say uh, Indiana, Indiana is made up of what you call Michigan and Illinois today. So before there was a Michigan and Illinois, all of that was in Indiana. So all the tribes in Michigan and all the tribes in uh, Illinois and then the tribes in Indiana, they were all living amongst each other in peace, sharing the same, uh, you know, in the same territory. And this is how other tribes were living in other places. It wasn't just one tribe in one in one so-called territory and no other tribe is near them. No, man. We were living close to each other. We had treaties with each other. We worked together. We built civilizations for it. You know what I'm saying? Not only for, but with each other. So we was doing it. So we're just getting back to doing what we always have done because we are our ancestors without doubt or contradiction. But we got to get thinking again. So establishing your personality is everything. Everything. Because everything is functioning on your mind. Government. Govern the mind, govern to control, supervise, ment, mental, ment, ment, mind. You understand? So, I'm in Rosh, I'm in Bright right there, boy. I'm in Lam, I'm in I'm in Ra. Here we go. You know what I'm saying? So, so essentially, once you have your personality established, then you can move on an international playing field. That's balancing equal out because you are back in your proper position. You are lined up with uh, your ancestors. OK. And like I said, treaty, man, there's no constitution on this planet that came into existence without a treaty coming before it. So if you don't know what your treaty is, I suggest you read up on the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1786 between Morocco and the United States of America. That is our treaty. That gave the United States of America authorization to do commerce on our land. To do commerce on our land. Okay. So for the so-called Europeans that branched or that branched away from uh, um, New England. Right. They established their own personality. Or I wouldn't say they established, I'd say we helped them establish a personality called the United States of America, which is really the United States of Morocco. Okay. The personality that we granted to them or helped them establish was the United States of America to do commerce on our land with us that were already here. Okay. So you gotta understand. The moment they took the gold out in 33, this is when the whole concept of personality really started to kick in. Because if we're trading in gold and silver, then I could just sell you or I could offer you what I offer as myself. Hey, I'm cool, Mari Suel. This is what I offer. I do this. I do that. I do that. I do that. I do that. There wouldn't need, need, need to be a name. There, there wouldn't be a need for, let's say, Sunil University. There wouldn't be a need for, let's say, Sunel Shiamu Republic or any other organizations, period. You would just be able to do what you do. You charge gold and silver or real money, things of real value, barter and trade, and you keep it pushing. But because we don't have gold and silver, this is why personalities now are necessary because everything's being transferred through our uh states, e states. They took our e states, which were private which were governing, being governed according to customary law, and they made them into states. The only way they made them into states is because we stopped thinking. We stopped thinking according to our customary law. We forgot about the treaty. Come back to the treaty. Hold tight to the treaty. The treaty is here to protect you. Okay? And just to give you the further knowledge, the W.A. Ben. Right. When you create an entity, establish it for W.A. Ben purposes. Um, I learned this from um, Jonah Bay. You know what I'm saying? But W.A. Ben purposes is the W is Allah in Arabic. You understand? The eight, when you flip it sideways, is the infinity sign. 
okay? When you have an eight, it's an hourglass, but when you make it horizontal, it's an affinity, it's the affinity sign, okay? So Allah's infinite, what do you think B-E-N stands for? I'll let y'all finish that part. Allah's infinite Ben. So you tell me, because everything is codified. They like to give things away in messages, right? So when we align with our treaty, we're aligning with Allah's infinite benefit, which is what? Our inheritance, man. Birthright. Our birthright is our benefit. The benefit of existing, the right to exist, the right to be. That is our benefit <laughs> as the beneficiaries. You understand? So this is how the international realm operates. Everything is through persons. This is why I tell you, we make moves. Everything's in the name of Sunel. There's nothing, nothing in our proper person. Everything is through our personality. All right. Everything is through our personality. That way we're protected. Okay. And that's just how we got to do things. Look like somebody pulled up, but that's just, it looks like that. But no one's there. But that's just how we got to do things, right? So if we can understand that concept, it'll clear up a lot of things on how we're supposed to be moving. It'll clear up a lot of things as to why it's so important or crucial. Um, trust. This is why I talk about trust. This is why when I declared my nationality, I was still sitting there stuck like, yo, I was stuck for about another four to five months after I declared my nationality. I was stuck like. I don't want to go back into the commercial realm using the social or using the straw like, damn, but I still got to make ends meet. I still got to function, right? While still being under occupation, I got to figure this out. So how am I going to do this? How am I going to get this done? And um, once I, like I said, once I tapped into that uh, Ron March show with Jonah Bay, he was talking about foreign EINs and trust. This is really the first time I really started hearing about trust and establishing a trust and operating through your trust and business trust and this now i'm like yo trust and then i start getting into the concept of trust and then i understand like yo everything operates um based off trust who's that yo 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 it's your son oh what's up carlos what's up cook going on hmm. yeah i can do that for you tomorrow at three thank you no problem Yes, you know, so trust, man. So now we understand that personality, right? When you create your trust, you're, what you're creating is a person, aka a personality, right? That can put you or protect you in the international realm because that person is aligned to treaty. <laughs> Article six of the constitution says that all debts and contracts entered into before the adoption of this constitution shall be valid against the United States as it was during the Confederacy. So I, I'm just saying, and the, and the Confederacy was us too. That was us as well, just in another time period. More is in another time period. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get this work, y'all. Real work, real bad. So after saying everything I done said, man, uh what do you guys what do you guys think or what are your guys opinions so far um you know what let's look at some let's look at some stuff Uh, yeah, we got chaos. That's cake. Let's see here. Background. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got work to do. We got work to do. Oh, there we go. I think that's good enough, fam. I can leave it here. What's the quick question? Prophet Drali was a Capricorn, so when he flew the star upside down, is a representation of him as a Capricorn. Also meant that it was a signal for Moore's um, for meeting. Yeah, so I'm about to have, I got some, some errands to run, but yeah, to answer that question, um, you know, like I said, same people in different time periods. So in those different time periods, we had our own different personalities, but they were still in alignment with that original source. So the flags may have looked different. You have one white flag, uh, five, five pointed gold star. You have a plain red flag and you got a red flag with a five pointed green star. You understand? So all these are different us at different time periods. They're all still our shit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, and make sure it's all rights reserved for that signature. All rights reserved. Or you could write without prejudice and then um, first and then sign through it. Or you can write all rights reserved first and then you sign your signature through it. You understand? So you can do it like that. But family, I got to get going, man. I appreciate y'all rocking out with me for almost an hour and a half, almost 90 minutes. Hope you got some uh, good information in. Hope you got a lot of clarity on international law. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep uh, red ink or blue ink. I'm going to keep, go, uh, you know, keep going over this until we get this wrapped in our mind so we can start thinking again. All right. To get ourselves operating properly. All right, fam. Peace, man. Love y'all. Islam. Catch y'all next time.